And we're live. Hey, it's Jeff Spath. Hey, it's John Reed. And we're at the informally known as the Quality in 9000, which I always, I always like because ISO 9000 is a quality initiative. It really was well, easy to remember. Yeah, going to ISO 9000 quality check. Um, so now it's renamed the Rosen Inn at Point Orlando, which is harder to say and hard, much harder to remember. I'll always think of this as the quality, and they can never call it the Rosen as far as I'm concerned. The first time I ever arrived here, I walked into the restaurant, and someone was screaming uh, the lyrics to Billy Joel's Honesty, karaoke, and I knew that I was in love with the quality, and 80 yeah. bucks a night or whatever it is, yeah. good to go. I, I like it compared to the conference hotels. Not only is it less expensive, but it is more of a family place. So there's swimming pools with tourists, families, or buses pull up and go to the, uh, the parks, and... Uh, it isn't just a business hotel where there's many suits and limos and all that, so it's good for me. So, at the end of ASA Sapphire 2011, um, we're, we're relaxing, we're going to hit some dinner. Um, so what were your impressions of the crowd and the, the buzz that was happening this week? Well, I think there was a lot of energy at the event, and I think... Uh, I felt a strong uh, ASUG presence this year, and I think I give SAP some credit for that as well because a lot of people told SAP, including myself, going into this conference, there needed to be more of a customer presence and keynotes and on the show floor, et cetera. I, I think we saw more of that this year. Now, having said that, uh, I think there's more that can be done, but uh, I felt there was a lot of energy. Some of the analysts I know were disappointed in the conference because they didn't feel there was a lot of news they could go and get go get their eyeballs and their page views and report and they fly a long way to get stories and when they don't get them that's sort of their their thing um, but I kind of like these events where there's not a lot of crazy news because for me a lot of the best stories are simply uh, talking with customers about what they're really dealing with and that to me is a big highlight of the event and that's one reason why I always come early and go to an ASA pre-conference session because that's my chance to get a deep dive into really interesting issues that are not about the sexy, in-memory, on-demand, you know, right, stuff. Right. So, like, I was at a center of excellence day, and, you know, that's a really important topic because uh, there's di differences of opinion about exactly what that means. But the bottom line is it's SAP customers trying to get more value out of their implementations and hopefully be less dependent, for example, on overly expensive SIs and stuff. And right. So, you know, I think that's a really important topic, and I learned a lot. Okay. So. Yeah, one of the downsides of going to something like TechEd, I go to a hands-on, it's about a product that's just coming out, and I might not get to it for years, and, you know, you, there's that up and down factor. It's nice to know about it, but if you can't use it or apply it, then, then that's bad. So, um, did you get to customer presentations besides the B conference? I did. It was mostly by design oriented because that was part of my focus for the track. Okay. Uh, so. I was doing a lot of videos, which are going to be shared probably on my JDOD.com website with Dennis Hollett. But basically, we shot a lot of videos with uh, by design customers. And last year, that type of customer was pretty much a rare breed. But this year, there were actually quite a few of them. And so it was interesting to talk about them and their issues with, with what they're doing with SAP and what they're trying to accomplish. And in many ways, uh, you know, it's some of the same stuff. It's a little bit different because it's... You know, it's a smaller in scope than a large enterprise, so some of the issues aren't the same. Okay. Not as much legacy stuff to deal with from other environments. But uh, anyway, so that was really interesting. And, and yeah, I, I hit a lot of customers just on the show floor and stuff as well. So, well, from, from a tactical side, because I helped to program the event and, and worry about the schedule and the time in between sessions and the you know, starting and ending, what, what did you find about the location, the maps and, and, and all of the things that are, are in a way intangible but contribute to your ability to experience as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, I personally found the show floor easy to get around this year. Uh, I don't, I'm not clear why SAP doesn't number the, uh, the, the exhibition hall, the show floor roles where the vendors are located a little better. Uh, I had to ask a couple of booth members, what number are you kind of think to try to make my way, but otherwise, like, a lot of the uh, campus areas were really clearly labeled this year. For example, the ASUG area right. was really easy to find. Right. Uh, I, I did an interview with ASUG News over there, and but there was a lot going on there that was pretty cool. 
Uh, the one uh, sort of downside that as SA men SAP mentors we dealt with is that we had a location over at the Hilton, which wasn't far away, but it did make for some discombobulated stuff for me. I had to miss some stuff because of the walking back and forth, but overall I thought it was good that way. Right. So. Well, let me get back to, to mentors in a second, but typically what I want to do if I'm going to go to the show floor is to look for vendors. So in the printed program guide, not the schedule, but the program guide, they have vendors in alphabetical order, right. and the rows were numbered, but maybe the columns were not, or the columns were numbered, and maybe the rows were not. Right. And if you knew, oh, IBM is a low number in 2600, then, then you could say, oh, it's at the other end. Right. So that's a trick for next time. Right, exactly. Find, find your big vendors, and, and they're going to have actual visible lettering on, on the program guide. Yeah, the smaller ones won't, but that'll right. orient your, your row-oriented database. Yeah, I would say that's true. Okay. And SAP mentors, you, you met, there were, I hear, over 50. And any that you hadn't met before that really um, you want to make comments about? Yeah, there were definitely a, a, a couple highlights for me. Uh, uh, the uh, I, All four IBM mentors were there, and I'd only met two of them. So Likewise. they had flown a long way. So so our buddy Buddy Dip was yep. here, and also Somnath. Right. And Somnath and I go back uh, quite a long ways. Right. and. Somnath and I had a, a passionate discussion about the future of the SAP uh, consultant because he's a supply chain consultant and there's just a lot of significant change in the product line right now and the future of SAP, when you hear the keynotes, it doesn't sound a lot like ERP and so there's a lot of questions for those who have a stake in this field and Somnath cares passionately about trying to help people make those skills transition. So. Right. He kind of cornered me at the at the influencer event we had, and we just had an awesome talk. And to me, that's that's sort of a keeper from the conference that I'll take with me. Great. Yes, I met, I met both of them, and uh, my uh, planned trip to Ticket in India. Now I have a couple more uh, resources to, to tap into for, for that. Um, trying to think of other mentors. Well, there's new mentors, so I met, yeah. met several of them. Um, some of whom I I had known before. They were mentors. Derek Lorenka and I hung out for a while. Um, it, he's got perspective from, from business objects only. Why don't right. you comment on that? Because there are shops that do not run SAP, ERP, or any other pro other products. They've got business objects, again, by owning it before. What do you see is their interest in, in a session like this? And what, who, who have you talked to in that space? Yeah, well, I've talked to some of the same people because I did talk with him, although I only spoke with him briefly, but uh, I also talked a fair amount with uh, with Nico, uh, who's another uh, mentor from the business objects side, and says a lot with Excelsius and dashboarding. And uh, personally, I think the business objects folks have a whole lot to offer right now because while SAP customers do have a choice in business intelligence products, so they're not always going to go with business objects. Many of them are heading in that direction, and it really benefits them to understand, especially the integration technologies that have evolved out of the Business Objects Toolkit. And many of these uh, Business Objects mentors, I think, are really, they, they grew up in the Business Objects world and they have a passion for that product and I think they bring a lot. Um, now, one of the questions that I'm interested in is to what extent do they continue to need their own user groups where they can also talk amongst themselves and focus, because they're not necessarily always thinking about ERP issues, right? Sure. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds, and I didn't get into that discussion heavy duty, but I know they have an event, I think, in the fall, so that'll be interesting to see how that, you know, eventually fits in. Will that eventually be subsumed in things like TechEd, or will it remain an independent entity? And I don't know the right answer to that, so. Right. Did, did they express concerns about that in either SAP altering what business objects is and, and making their lives difficult, or just where to go for help because of the, the, the evolution of the product lines? Well, I think there's trade-offs because I think business objects folks definitely appreciate the potential that SAP can bring because, I mean, look, let's face it, SAP has deep pockets and a lot of resources to throw at issues. So I think the, the, the quote-unquote synergies, if you will, like, for example, bringing in in memory and mobility and other things that SAP can bring to the table can be intriguing for business objects folks. And, and at the same time, there's concerns, like, for example, certification is an issue that I'm closely tied to through the work I do with the Certification 5, and business object certifications are in a bit of a state of flux right now, and folks in that community are looking for answers that they're not getting. So I think it's a little bit of a mix because when you have a clear identity and you get acquired... Choppers. 
Yeah. I think they're coming for me now. Whenever I trash SAP, the choppers come. I don't know why that is. It's a black helicopter. But, uh, but when it, the business objects uh, community had a strong sense of identity, and understandably, I think, you don't want to lose that. So, But you do want to be included, so it's a... Uh, you know, tricky. Yeah, my, my sense is one of the issues there is the moving of business objects into something called business analytics and then into the HANA product line. In other words, in a way, forcing customers because they've got this business objects heritage right. into an SAP controlled stack. That's, right. that's, I'm not predicting that, but th I have this sense of that's a good possibility and if I were a business object only shop I would be worried about that because of then SAP's ability to control your future. Right and, and when you look at the renaming of some of the products which was definitely something SAP did um, now they did include some input from business topics folks but they made the final decisions and that does send you a message as far as sort of yes. who is in charge of that relationship and, and for for customers and those that work in that community, they have to have uh, concerns there. And I think on the on the more plus side, a lot of these folks I talk to are excited about the, the pending 4.0 release. And one of the things about that is SAP doing a lot more with integrating. They talk about the semantic layer and more of a unified look and feel. So that's an example of SAP throwing resources in a good way. Right. So I think there's some good things, but there's definitely legitimate concerns. And, and those, I don't think, have been resolved. So that's why we go to these shows, just to try to get a pulse on that. And I suppose at Tech we will get another view, and we'll see where it lands. All right. Well, let's end this uh, video cast with, uh, on a high note, maybe. Um, so we're, we're going to go out to dinner, and then we're going we're to fly home and do our respective um, get back to the regular grind. Um, what, do you, what do you see coming out of this and some big takeaways or um, maybe not hot news that, that uh, run of the mill press analyst, blogger would be looking for? What's your big takeaway? Well, for me, the big takeaway is uh, there's a personal one and there's a broader one. The personal one is just solidifying relationships. Uh, you know, there's so many brilliant people in this community and a lot of them are a little bit uh, individualistic in a way that I really like. And, you know, you're one of them, there's many others. And so when you leave with furthering those relationships, I think that's a pretty fantastic feeling. Uh, there's just nothing that takes the place of that. When you talk to someone on the phone two weeks from now that you've never met, now you have a context. So that's big. The other thing that I, I see is sort of SAP at a crossroads. And I think I see a lot of good things. I see a lot of things that trouble me. But one thing that is a real positive that I see my experience working with bloggers and working with quote unquote influencers is a lot of listening. I mean, I sat down with a lot of SAP executives and we had conversations that felt very frank and very much back and forth. And that to me is, gives me a little bit of like hope to take forward because yeah, listening is only the first step, then you have to follow through, but it does have to start with frank conversations that feel authentic on both sides. Right. And that doesn't mean just me challenging SAP, that also means SAP challenging me. It goes both ways, and I, I really took that away in a good way from this show, so that's the high note. Cool. Hungry? Thanks, John. <laughs> Let's get some food, man. Okay.